Uh, let me uh, try to start and we will see where we end up. Oh, yeah, it's a question that I haven't done. And it's actually one of the harder questions. So let me give it an attempt. Uh, let me do this, dock this to desktop, maximize it. Yeah, let me do this. Okay, yeah, let me do that. This is a question I haven't done. It is actually one of the slightly harder questions. So I might run out of time, but uh, let's do it. Uh, we are here. Uh, got a question I haven't done before. I should do it. I make I, I make you do it. So, um, okay. So this question says, consider a mass M on an inclined plane connected to a small mass M with a string. Okay. Uh, they are giving me a, a angle theta of the horizontal. Okay. Please keep on organizing. Describe the forces on the free body diagram for the masses M and M uh, as the car just, uh, sits still at rest. So that means it's at zero acceleration. I think that's a setup I've seen many times before. So now when you see that instruction, my recommendation to you is draw the free body diagram. It says describe because um, this input box doesn't accept the figures. That's why I say describe, but really you should draw your free body diagram the way you know how on your piece of paper. So I have small mass M there. I'm gonna draw my big mass M as separate diagram. I look at the small mass M, think through, okay, what forces are acting on it? There must be gravity. There's almost always gravity. And I think through, okay, what other things are touching it? In what direction is it accelerating? There's a string touching it. So it makes a sense that there might be an upward acceleration, not acceleration, upward force, tension force coming from the string attached to it. And with these two forces, I can make this accelerate down, accelerate up, maybe not even accelerate, all those possibilities are possible. So I'll just leave it this way. It feels like I drew all the forces, I'm good. Big mass M, there's again, always gonna be gravity. And then I think through, well, there's a string touching it also. So there's probably tension force pulling it that way. So if I draw uh, tension force and gravity that way, then, um, if you think that you have drawn all the forces, then this is what you have to think through. First, think through what the direction of acceleration might be. The directions that that big mass M might accelerate is in this direction, either up the slope or down the slope. However, when you look at the, your net force, you know, tension plus gravity, that net force will be pointed in this direction that's totally not the direction of your acceleration. So that should make you think and realize that, oh, I haven't drawn all the forces. The one force that I still need to draw is the normal force. And with these three forces now, you can make them add up in such a way that you can get acceleration in the direction that you uh, think you might get. So, so that's my free body diagram. Let me describe it. Uh, free body diagram for M has two forces mg downward and t uh, tension upward. The free body diagram for big mass m has uh, three forces, mg downward, t uh, upward along the incline, and, um, and n uh, normal force perpendicular to the uh, incline. Uh, upward and to the right. So that's the description and with attached the diagram, any ambiguity in the wording can be resolved. Um, and there's a one thing that I will kind of gloss over, which is, you know, is it really correct that this tension is equal to that tension? And the question doesn't actually say the conditions I need for that. They need to say the pulley is uh, frictionless and massless. But, you know, even if they don't say it, it's so common that if you say these tension forces are the same, that's fine. That's a really common assumption anyway. So, okay, part B. They are giving us a, a value of the masses. Find the accelerations of the blocks in terms of masses, theta, and gravitational acceleration g. Indicate the direction of acceleration. Show your work. Um, okay. Uh, so, 
So this is where you need to think about your standard strategy. So the questions guiding us through those steps, what we did here, this is already standard strategy step number one. So we need to standard strategy step number two, which is defining our axis. And let me do it in this diagram. Um, so that actually, you know, let me just typically um, organize the for my later attached work and I'll keep my B separate. So um, step number two is defining my axis for small mass M, not much work. It's just basically one dimensional for big mass M. Um, so I have the direction of acceleration. Um, so uh, I make my uh, axis go along that direction. So this is going to be my x axis. Let's say that I think that big mass will slide up. So I'll make a, this my positive x so that uh, I'm assuming my acceleration of the block will be upward. Um, and uh, this axis will be my y axis. And um, it's okay if we turn out to be wrong, then what we'll get is um, so whatever quantities that we expect to be positive, it ends up being negative. That'll indicate to us, for example, acceleration instead of being upward, it's downward. So that's something that we can watch out for as we proceed in the solution. So that's step number two, define the coordinate axis. Step number three, now we need to uh, break forces into components. Tension and normal force are fine, already along an axis. What I need to break is the gravity along the y-axis and the x-axis. And I like to uh, indicate it as like a triangle form because then you can kind of uh, refer that to the angles that are given and um, locate this angle within this triangle somewhere. So, you know, uh, this angle is 90 degrees minus theta. This angle is 90 degrees minus that angle. Um, so 90 degrees minus 90 degrees minus theta, that's theta. So uh, this takes practice to do it always correctly. So now that I've um, identified the angle, I can even write down the expressions for these components. This uh, is going to be the x component will be mg sine theta. It's on the opposite side of the angle. The y component will be mg cosine theta because it involves the adjacent side of, to the angle. So that's step number three. Step number four is where we finally write down our Newton's second law equations. If you've done this carefully, then all you are doing is basically reading information off of your annotated diagram. So I say, the uh, so with this accelerating upward, we are assuming the small mass m is accelerating downward. So for small mass m, I have its uh, acceleration is equal to its net force, which will be mg. It's um, so I'm gonna make the downward direction to be my positive x, uh, so that I don't have any unnecessary signs. Um, so downward positive mg. Um, minus upward negative t uh, divided by mass of the object. That's my equation one coming from small mass m. I'm going to have two more equations that come from my big mass m. So in the x direction, I say, OK, that's going to be acceleration in the x direction will be a. That's equal to the two sum of two x component forces. Tension, this time it's positive, uh, minus the opposite direction force big M G sine theta divided by big M for the net force divided by mass. Step no, question, equation number three. Um, so acceleration along the y direction is a zero. It, quite purposefully and by design, we defined our coordinate axis so that it would happen this way. We don't have to deal with the x and y component of acceleration. So zero is equal to the sum of forces, normal force minus the y component of gravity, mg cosine theta, divided by big M. So I have a system of three equations. Now we can solve for it. Oh, you, let's use a sage math. So I'll use a sage math to cell here, as we were using before. Um, uh, I'm just going to do Google search. I can never remember this website uh, URL, sagecell.sagemath.org. So let me declare all my variables. It's going to be small m, big m, g, t, um, acceleration. Did I forget anything? Oh, theta. Okay, those are all my symbols, hopefully. Uh, my equation one is going to be acceleration is equal to 
uh, m times g minus t divided by small m. Equation 2 is going to be uh, acceleration is equal to t minus m times g times sine theta. And because we're not solving for theta, I think we'll be fine. Uh, divide by big M. Equation 3 is equal to 0 is equal to n minus m times g times cos theta divided by m. Okay, so uh, we need to solve for what? We need to solve for uh, accelerations of the blocks, uh, which their magnitude will be the same, A. So I'm going to say, okay, with those equations, I'm solving for equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. Now, if you simply say A for acceleration, you will get an error. And the error will relate to there being a uh, oh, wait, 0. Theta. Oh, I think uh, I forgot to define n. So let me do n. Um, yeah, it, it uh, kind of refuses to solve. Because um, with a system of three equations, you have to have three unknowns. So you have to think through, in my equations, what's known, what's unknown, and specify those other unknowns as well. Masses are given, or you are assuming they are given. Acceleration is unknown. That's why we are solving for it. Ah, tension is unknown. And uh, let's see. Theta is known. Ah, normal force is unknown. So you have to specify all those unknowns so that you have three questions, three unknowns. With that, now it will give me a solution. Solution of the acceleration and tension and normal force. I only want acceleration, so I'll just get it the zeroth element, which is the, the system of solutions. And then of that first element, which is the acceleration. So uh, that gets me that. Now, what it's asking for is um, find the acceleration in terms of m theta. I need to plug in small m is equal to that. So let's do that. Let's uh, substitute small m is equal to um, 2 over 3 big M. Yeah. 2 times m over 3. So that's the answer. Let me just copy and paste that. And for my attached work, I'm going to basically refer to my work using Sage Math. So I will take a screenshot of it and be ready to uh, put this into attached work. And for, you know, always check with your instructor if a particular tool is allowed. In this class, Sage Math is always allowed. You are just using a calculator. You already had to do the hard work of setting up the equations. So uh, indicate the direction of acceleration. Oh, so let's see. I'm going to try to figure out if um, so sine theta is one half. So it's a three half minus. So this is negative. Uh, so with the minus, that's going to be positive. So um, uh, since A will be positive, the acceleration is up the slope for m and downward for small m. So given that, in what direction does the cart need to accelerate so that the mass m neither slides up or down? Oh, yeah, that's the hard question. So uh, let's see. Um, so you have this picture, and you have figured out, OK, this is going to slide up. This is going to uh, move down. So it's asking the question of, uh, we want to have it so that this doesn't slide. And I think it, 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 the answer to that really relies on your intuition. Like if you have a block that's sitting here and you don't want it to slide up, then it feels like I need to kind of, I need the slope to be moving to the left so that as the block tries to slide up, it kind of catches up with it and keeps it at the same height. So I'm going to answer based on that. The cart needs to accelerate to the left to catch up with the sliding up M and keep it at the same height. That's what my intuition tells me. That's my answer. Now, I think I have, what, five minutes? That's possibly not enough to actually do the last thing. Find the Newton's second law equations that would allow you to solve for the acceleration. Do not solve for, yeah, take too long, do verify. Okay, okay, maybe I can do that. So 
Uh, so let's do this. Um, so for part to C, I'm gonna start out with actually not that, but this one. The simpler. Maybe this. I, I'll start from this and see what I need to modify. So, um, so this is gonna be C. And so now we have to think about what am I modifying? So we said that we are going to set it up in such a way that M won't slide up or down. So in the vertical direction, its acceleration will be zero. But if the cart itself is accelerating to the left, that big mass M is accelerating with it to remain at the same position relative to ramp. So big mass M is accelerating this way. And then small mass M, it's not going to accelerate downward because there's no string that's doing that. But if it's kind of remaining at a stationary shape, then this must be accelerating to the left. And as you think through this, um, you know, did I draw all the forces? Do I need to draw any new forces? What you should realize is that this is actually the complete free body diagram. There is just one slight bit of a mistake that I'll quickly fix. But other than that, nothing else needs to change. All the forces here remain the same. Uh, what will change is their relative magnitudes so that you get this leftward acceleration. Now, what needs to change is with a small block M, you see you know, this leftward acceleration and no horizontal force to produce it. That's why um, you need tension force to be angled this way. And there's going to be some new angle phi that you need to figure out. <laughs> That's going to be tied to what this acceleration is and so on. Uh, yeah, again, as I say in the instruction, there's um, um, not enough time to solve. Do I have enough time to enlist the type? Yeah, because um, for... Uh, actually, let me do it this way. So some things that you need, do need to change. Because your acceleration has changed, you do need to uh, change your axis. This needs to be your axis. This needs to be your axis. Same deal here, x and y. And let me just do it on the fly because uh, I only have three minutes and writing it out here and then typing it, I might run out of time. So I'll just uh, type up from scratch, just uh, staring at this incomplete set of diagrams. And let me actually erase this because that's going to confuse me more than help me. And then if I have time, I'll fill in the gaps here later. Oops, I do need this acceleration still. So the uh, I'm going to get four equations, by the way. Now both the objects are fully two-dimensional. So for the small mass m, I'm going to have equation uh, the first equation that says uh, acceleration is given by the horizontal component for, to force t times the sine v um, divided by its mass. And I have vertical component uh, um, equation. Zero acceleration is equal to uh, upward force T times cosine of phi minus the downward force mg divided by m. The, this third equation, this is the first equation for big mass m, the x direction. So that will be acceleration is equal to horizontal component of the force. Um, so that will be... Uh, horizontal component of tension and normal force. So it'll be T, um, I want to say cosine times cosine theta minus and times sine theta. And I'm doing it this way both because I'm out of time and because I have a lot of practice doing this. So I probably didn't make a mistake, but <laughs> we'll double check. Vertical direction, zero is equal to uh, t, all, all the upward forces, t times sine theta plus n times cosine theta, uh, and then the minus the uh, downward force, n times g divided by m. So that's the fourth equation, and this is solvable because we have four equations and four unknowns. Uh, I'll double check that that is the case. I just don't want to run out of time before I have a chance to type that in. 36 seconds. So uh, we have four equations. So four unknowns. Uh, we don't know acceleration. We don't know tension. We don't know phi. That's not given. And we don't know normal force. Everything else is known. We know theta. We know 
the masses. So, uh, so we we should be able to solve it. So with that, when it runs out of time, or rather, as it runs out of time, let me um, do the step uh, step number three of the standard strategy properly here with enough time. So what I need to do is I need to break uh, this force into y and x component. And doing that, you see, oh, x component comes from sine of phi. That's, I think, how I put it in there. And the y component is adjacent, cosine of phi. Good. Um, here, I need to now break down uh, uh, break down uh, two forces instead of one, because both tension and normal force now need to be broken down into our new x and y axis. So um, tension breaks down this way. And again, I like to draw these as triangles. And the purpose of doing that is then it gives me a place to basically figure out this angle theta. Where does it go? Does it go here or here? So multiple choice. If you're guessing at random, it'll be a 50% chance of getting it right. Um, that's why I recommend that you go through the geometry exercise. I see that I have two parallel lines, meaning I can say this angle is equal to that angle. So that's theta. So the x component would have been t cosine theta, y component would have been t sine theta. And that is correctly used here, t cosine theta and t sine theta. And the end, so if this is theta, then uh, then the, uh, can I do this? Then this angle is 90 degree minus theta. Uh, now this angle is 90 degrees minus that angle, which is 90 degrees minus theta. So we do both of those steps. I think I have this angle being theta. So with that, the x component is n sine theta, and that's what I have here. And the uh, y component is adjacent side, so that's n cosine theta. So I was running out of time, so I kind of did it backwards. <laughs> I did this part in my head and wrote it down. But um, I do really recommend that you draw the figures. That's the only way to ensure that you don't make mistakes. Uh, that's quite common for people to make. So with that, I think that's uh, um, it for this question. Let me just um, uh, paste in my work. Um, and uh, so in your problem set assessment, you've had to attach your work. And one of the reasons we set up this course that way is so that you get practice attaching work while you're doing problems and assessments. And for this timed assessment, you can attach your work, your work the exact same way you've been doing for your problems and assessment. And um, to the also you know same level of detail, if you've been getting feedback from me that your problem set assessments don't have enough work attached, then yes, please um, do attach more work when you are doing the timed assessment. Um, so, all right, that's the last of it. So I can do save work and continue. And same with the problem set assessment. If you somehow don't save work and con like don't say attach work there, you can always do it later. Uh, and the way to do it later is on the, this screen. You can refresh the screen and, um, and click on the add work button. And why am I not able to view my work? I should always be able to view my work. No. Oh, I made a mistake. So the mistake I made is um, I didn't do this as test student. I did this in the instructor preview. Um, <laughs> so um, let, let's do it this way. So... Uh, yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure that uh, review work link, it'll pop up for you. It, it should pop up for you. Uh, because um, the screen I was showing was not test to student view, it was instructor preview, uh, which you know didn't have anything additional, but uh, this kind of lives here temporarily. When I uh, move out of this window, it's gonna disappear, I think. So uh, let me do this. I'm gonna go find the question and um, just uh, do that side by side. Let me get rid of this. Do this side by side here. And I'm just gonna go bring up that question in preview mode. This is the preview mode. Um, 
and I can bring up answer key here. <laughs> so um, description, this is fine. Uh, it, I'm, the description is correct. I don't need answer key for that. What I do need answer key for is this um, to make sure that I didn't make a mistake. So uh, to over, yeah, this portion might be randomly generated. If it is, then it might not always be two thirds. If that's the case, you know, do that. So there's the answer key, yeah, and all that. And um, the acceleration is, oh, I guess you could simplify. So I didn't simplify here, but I um, think what I have here is still right. So three halves uh, minus two, that's, uh, um, that's minus one, one half. So times minus one fifth is one over 10. And I get that one over 10 here. So yeah, one over 10 G. Yeah, so could have been simplified, but that is correct enough. <laughs> uh, given that, does it, which does it need to accelerate? I hope he says leftward in, yeah, excellent. okay, good. And the, the last one, yeah, that's gonna be that set of equations. Um, yeah, you need that and all that stuff. And uh, I think I got all that. I didn't miss anything. So yeah, uh, so that's uh, one more of the, um, the free form timed assessment question that you might get in the part two that deals with um, uh, multiple objects that have some force of interaction between them here. That would be the tension force.